So solve the following equations and inequalities. Write your final answers for inequalities in algebraic, graphical, and interval notation. So go ahead, pause the video here and solve for x. Go ahead, please try on your own before watching the rest of the video. All right, assuming you've come back, let's take a look and see what you got. So first, 2 times x plus 3 equals 8. So we're going to undo the plus 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides, which will give us 2x equals 5, or x equals 5 halves because to undo the 2 times x, we have to divide by 2. You will check the answers, do for my's only column, remember that? So that way you can make sure you really got the answer. So 2 times 5 halves is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and so 8 equals 8 checks out. So this one works. All right, let's do the inequality. Same way, subtract 3 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2, and you will get algebraic solution to be x greater than 5 halves. We preserve the inequality because we were dividing by a positive 2. Same solution written in graphical form, so you have to draw a number line greater than 5 halves. So first plot 5 halves, a whole at 5 halves because it's not included, and greater than, so you will shade everything above 5 halves. Interval notation for that then would be, remember, round bracket or parentheses for 5 halves because 5 halves is not included. And then infinity is never included because that's a concept, it's not a number. But it basically is a notation that says it's 5 halves and up. So all real numbers bigger than 5 halves, that's what that notation means. All right, pause the video and see what you can do here. Remember, there is no one fixed road memorization way. Use your creativity and solve. As long as you're mathematically clear on what steps you're doing when, you should be OK. All right, assuming you've come back, I'm going to choose to subtract 12 from both sides, which will give me 5 minus 12, which is negative 7. And then add 4x to both sides, which will give me 6x equals negative 7, or x equals negative 7 6. And then just remember, no matter what method you choose to solve or what operations you do first, as long as you mathematically do correct steps, you should get the same answer, even if your initial steps look different. But then just remember to check. So do a formize only column. So all of your problems, whenever you do equation solving, should have a checking formize only column in it so that you can be sure that the answer works out. How do I know if this answer works out? I have negative 7 thirds plus 12. 12 is 12 over 1, or 36 thirds. 36 minus 7, which is 29 thirds. On the other side, it's 5 over 1, so it'll be 15 thirds plus 14 thirds is 29 thirds. So you remember how to do common denominators and then add like terms and just verify that both left hand, right hand side are the same. So I didn't complete the remaining steps for you because I want you to start becoming independent. So go ahead and check to make sure that you really got the right answer. All right, on this side, I'll do the same thing for inequality. All right, so now we are at the step where we have 6x less equals negative 7. So to get rid of the 6, we'll have to divide both sides by 6. So our algebraic solution is going to be what? x is less than or equal to negative 7 sixths. Same thing in geometric form would be, so plot negative 7 sixths and x less than or equal to. So the left-hand side, shade that. Interval notation will be negative infinity to negative 7, 6. Negative 7, 6 will have a square bracket because it's included. Round bracket for negative infinity because you can never really capture negative infinity. All right, pause the video and see what you can do, except this time you're using a different variable, solve for t. Again, it does not matter what variable you're using as long as you remember what principles you are applying. So pause the video and let's see what you got. All right, let's start with the left-hand side here. We have t 
taken the negative 4 and distributed it. Remember, distributed property multiplication over addition is what we've used here. Negative 4 times t is negative 4t. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. And then we have a minus 5 halves and then equals 2t. So here we have negative 16 halves minus 5 halves. So we can combine the 8 and the 5 halves. We have negative 4t minus 21 halves. To get rid of the 4t, we'll have to add 4t to both sides. So we'll have negative 21 halves equals 6. And then divide both sides by 6, which is the same as multiplying both sides by 1 over 6. And then reduce. So that will give us 6 goes into 21. So 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 7 is 21. And 2 times 2 is 4. And so when you reduce, you will see that our answer is going to be t equals negative 7 fourths. Again, you are so used to having the t on the left side. But remember, it does not matter whether the t or the variable is on the left or on the right. Because why? If you write a equals b, that's the same as saying b equals a. That's why. All right, let's take a look at the inequality. We'll do the same thing, except remember, if you divide or multiply by negative, you need to change signs. But here, we're only dividing by 6. Or that's the same as saying multiplying by 1 sixth. So we'll have negative 7 quarters is bigger than t, algebraically. Graphically, that would mean here's negative 7 quarters. And you are going to the left because negative 7 quarters is bigger than your solutions. t is smaller than negative 7 fourths. That's what it really means or negative infinity to negative 7 quarters and round brackets or parentheses on both ends because they are not included. All right, let's see what you can do on the next one. For here, you're going to solve for y. When you have multiple variables and you're solving for one of them, they are called literal equations. So here you're solving for the variable y. Go ahead and see what you can do. Pause the video here. All right, so we solve for y, which means we want to take away the mx. So since we have negative mx, you add mx to both sides. So we'll have y equals b plus mx. Or I could also write that as y equals mx plus b. Some of you might recognize that if you've seen lines before. It's the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. But not to worry, because we will do that later. Right now, we're just asking you to solve for a particular variable. You'll do the same thing again for the inequality. And it will be y greater than b plus mx or y greater than mx plus b. All right, pause the video and see what you can do here. Go ahead, try again. You can do it. All right, assuming you've come back, let's take a look. So get rid of the 3. And then we have negative 2x equals 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. So I have x equals negative 1. Again, for all the equations, you must have for my only column and check your answers to make sure that you really got it. All right, here we have negative 2x is greater than 2. But if we divide by negative 2, we're going to have to make sure that you change your inequality from greater than to less than. Because we are dividing by negative 2, we're going to have to change the greater than to less than. Metrically, that will mean what? We have a number line. We have punched hole at negative 1 and everything under. So interval notation will be negative infinity to negative 1 with open brackets, which means parentheses. Open means not included. All right, go ahead. You want to solve for y, and you are told that b is non-zero. Well, the equation part, you don't have to worry, because you just subtract the ax, and then divide everything by b. 
which means that both C and AX get divided by B. So our final answer will be Y equals C over B minus AX over B. If you do the same here, though, because we cannot divide by a variable in an inequality, because if the variable is positive, the inequality sign doesn't change. If the variable that you're dividing by is negative, you'll have to change sign. So that's why we have to make two cases. When b is bigger than 0, we will have everything as is. But when b is less than 0, you're going to have to change the sign to less than instead of greater than. Do you see? So here on the first one, we have y is bigger than c over b minus ax over b because b is positive. Here we have y is less than c over b minus ax over b because b was negative. So we had to divide by a negative number, so we had to change that sign. All right, pause the video, see what you can do. Solve for x. Again, when we have fractions, there are multiple things you can do. You can multiply both sides by common denominator, or just do exactly what you have been doing, adding like terms and so on, and see what you can do. Assuming you've come back, subtract 2 fifths. So we have 3 fifths minus 2 fifths will give us 1 fifth. Add 3x. And we'll have negative 2x equals 1 fifth. Divide both sides by negative 2, or that's the same as multiplying by negative half. Negative half times 1 fifth is negative 1 tenth. You can do the same for inequalities, exact same step. So here I'm choosing to add 3x. And then I have negative 2x plus 2 fifths is less equals 3 fifths. Subtract 2 fifths. So I'm using slightly different steps, but you can see how you'll end up with the same principle. And then multiply by negative half or divide both sides by negative 2. But that means you'll have to change the signs to greater equals because you divided by a negative. And so that's why we have that sign change. And so negative 2 can divide negative 2. And you'll end up with x is greater than or equal to negative 1 tenth. Graphical, one, negative 1 tenth is plotted and included, and greater or equal so to the right. And then interval notation, the negative 1 tenth will have a square bracket all the way to infinity. Infinity will have a parentheses because it's not included. All right, see what you can do with equation 2 minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 7 thirds. Just remember your toolbox, how to undo division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and that will enable you to solve any equation. Go ahead, take a look. All right, assuming you've come back, let's see what we got. Here, the denominator is x plus 1, which means our x cannot equal negative 1, because otherwise you'll have negative 1 plus 1 giving you 0 in the denominator. So we cannot have x equals negative 1. All right, then we have denominators on some terms, but not others. So we can create an equivalent equation by making common denominator on the left-hand side and right-hand side. So if you make the denominator 3 times x plus 1, then this term will need at 3 times x plus 1 over 3 times x plus 1. The second term is only missing the 3. And on the other side of the equal to, it's missing x plus 1. Multiplying and creating equivalent equations. So at every step, if you create equivalent equations, you are just using how to combine like terms. And then once you get to this step here, where you have a fraction equals another fraction, the equivalent equation from there would be that the only way two fractions are equal to each other when their denominators are already equal must be if the numerators are equal to each other. 
And this will only happen if x is not negative 1, because x equals negative 1 will cause 0 in the denominator. So as long as for all of these equivalent equations, you report that x is not equal to negative 1, we can multiply both sides by 3 times x plus 1, giving you 6x plus 3 equals 7x plus 7. And then solving like we've done before will give us x equals negative 4. So our solution to this equation is x equals negative 4. This is important to remember that if you solve an equation of this form and you end up with x equals negative 1, you would have to say no solution because x equals negative 1 causes 0 in the denominator. In this case, we got x equals negative 4, which is a solution, but you can always check it. So go ahead, put the value x equals negative 4 in the original equation to see if it still works. And that it doesn't just work for equivalent equations, but it works for the original equation. Go ahead, check your answers. So you should never ever get equations wrong because you can always check that you got the right answer. You have an automatic way to see if you have the right answer. So plugging into the original equation, you can see we plug in negative 4 for x, and you get 7, negative 7 over negative 3, which is 7 thirds. And that was our original equation wanted to equal 7 thirds. So it checks out. All right, go ahead and solve the inequality now. Just like we solved equations, see if you can solve inequality. Go ahead, pause the video here, see what you could do to solve this inequality. And again, the restriction has to be x not equal negative 1, just like when we did for equations, because you cannot have 0 in the denominator. All right, assuming you've come back, we proceed the same way as we did with equations. And now we have 6x plus 3 over 3 times x plus 1 greater equals 7x plus 7 over 3 times x plus 1. Now in equations, we could just get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides by the denominator. We cannot do that here for inequalities because do you remember why? because you can only multiply by positive real numbers to maintain the inequality sign. If you have a negative number you're multiplying by, the inequality sign changes. So it's a little more complicated. However, we know x equals negative 1, a critical number. Critical number means it makes 0 in the denominator. But when we solve the equation, we do know we have one solution. Negative 4 makes this exactly left-hand side equal to right-hand side. So we know at least one solution. How do we find the other solutions? Let's take a look at that next. So what we need to do is take a number line, and we already know negative 1 cannot be a solution, so we put a hole there. Negative 4 is a solution, so we include that. Well, how do we decide the rest of the real numbers if they are solutions or not? You can see the number line is divided into three parts, below negative 4, between negative 4 and negative 1, and above negative 1. So one way to determine if we have a solution or not is to do test points. So you can pick a point below negative 4. That will be, say, negative 6. Plug it into the original inequality and see what happens. So we get 2 and 1 fifth greater or equals 2 and a third by just doing some arithmetic. And we know 2 and a fifth is greater or equals 2 and a third. It's going to be false statement because 1 fifth is smaller than 1 third. If you plug in negative 2 and again do the computation, you can use your calculators if you want. But you will see you get 3 greater or equals 7 thirds. And 7 thirds is 2 and a third, which is a true statement. So all the points between negative 4 and negative 1 are your solutions. And take a look at points above negative 1. Above negative 1, we have, let's say, 0, 2 minus 1 over 0 plus 1. Simplify, you get 1 greater or equal 7 thirds. 7 thirds is 2 and 1 third. 
and you will see, no, that's not going to happen. So that's a false statement. One is not bigger than two and one third. So none of the points above negative one can be your solution. How can just testing one point be enough? We already saw from solving equations that when you plug in negative four, both sides are equal. So no matter what number you pick below negative four, you will always get a false statement. Similarly, no matter what number you pick between negative four and negative one, you will always get that the left-hand side is greater or equals seven-thirds. And no matter what number you pick above negative one, you will always get a false statement. And so that means that the only solutions are between negative four and negative one. Negative four included, negative one not included. So algebraic solution is negative four less equals x less than negative one. And interval notation would be square bracket negative four to negative one. And our graphical solution is what you see right here on the number line. So this test point method is extremely useful when we cannot directly solve an inequality like we were doing inequalities right before this one. All right, try solving absolute value 3x minus 4 equals 5 thirds. Go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do on this equation. You will see here that what we have is absolute value equals 5 thirds. And that's only going to happen if you're looking for distance of 3x minus 4 from 0 equaling 5 thirds. What that means is that 3x minus 4 can sit right on 5 thirds or right on negative 5 thirds. And so if you then solve the equations, the linear equations, 3x minus 4 equals 5 thirds, 3x minus 4 equals negative 5 thirds, the same way we've been doing the inequalities and equalities before now. The same way we've done them before, so add four, both sides, divide by three, you will end up with x equals 17 nines or seven nines. And just don't forget to check your answer. Your answer will be right here. So don't forget to check your answers. So when you check your answers, you can see that you can verify that those two are your solutions. All right, so now what happens when you have inequality? How do you solve the inequality then? Again, when we solve, when we solve equations, you got solutions to be 17 ninths and 7 ninths, but we don't know how to undo inequality. So you can do your test point method again. We know 17 ninths and 7 ninths make it exactly equal, so we're going to put holes there. So using the test point method, because we don't know how to undo inequalities for absolute value, so what we will do is use what we just got from solving the equation. Absolute value equation solved gave us 17 ninths and 7 ninths. So we have 7 ninths and 17 ninths cannot be part of the solutions. So now what do you think? We should do parts below 7 ninths, between 7 ninths and 17 ninths, and above 17 ninths. So if you do that, what do we get? We can put, say, 0, 10 ninths, and 20 ninths to get points in the three regions that we are interested in. So when you plug them in into your absolute value, here you will get uh, 3 times 0 minus 4 greater than 5 thirds. Simplify, you get 4 is bigger than 5 thirds, which is a true statement. So that means that is part of your solution. So let's highlight that. Let's start with 10 ninths. When you plug in 10 ninths, you get a false statement, which means that's not part of your solution. When you plug in 20 ninths, you can see doing the algebra that we get a true statement because 8 thirds is bigger than 5 thirds. So we will have to color that. And so now we have that our solutions, graphical solution is all real numbers below 7 ninths, all real numbers above 17 ninths. So our final solution will be interval notation, negative infinity to 7 ninths, union 17 ninths to infinity, algebraic notation, x smaller than 7 ninths or x greater than 17 ninths, and graphical solution will be that. 
All right, let's do one more problem. So see what you can do. Solve for x. 5 over x minus 1 plus 3x over x squared minus 1 equals negative 2 over x plus 1. Go ahead, pause the video and see what you can do. If you are looking at it thinking, oh God, I can do this, I can do this, remember, breathe, take deep inhale and exhale, soft, long inhale, soft, long exhale, both feet on the ground, sit as straight as you can so that your spine is as straight as it can be. You're alert, not distracted, one thing at a time. So you can hide that equal to negative 2 over x plus 1 and just take a look at what's left. Oh, you know how to do that. You just got through that. You have to factor the denominator, make common denominators. So go ahead and just do that part and then see if something comes to your head that will help you. So go ahead. Okay, once you notice that, first of all, x is going to have to be restricted. If x is 1 or negative 1, you're going to have 0 in the denominator. So automatically, we need to restrict our x. x cannot be 1 or negative 1. In the form i is only column, let's go ahead and factor the x squared minus 1. That's difference of squares. So we have x minus 1 times x plus 1. So you can see how you need to know how to factor, otherwise you won't be able to do this kind of problem. All right, so we factored everything. We need to make common denominators. Common denominator means least common multiple. So x minus 1 times x plus 1 is our least common multiple. So let's go ahead and do that. We know how to do that on both left-hand side and right-hand side. And if this is causing you issues, just do one term at a time. Remember, hide things and do one thing at a time. Don't get overwhelmed. OK, but now look what we have. We have on the left-hand side a numerator over denominator is equal to the right-hand side numerator over denominator. You already have the same denominators on both sides. So the only way the two rational expressions are going to be equal is if the numerators were equal. So we need to have 5 times x plus 1 plus 3x equal negative 2 times x minus 1. All right, so here we have to remember that the only reason we can do this where you just got rid of the denominator or you can think of it as multiplying both sides by the denominator, but you can only do that if the denominator was non-zero. That's why we need that condition on top, x not equals 1 or negative 1. So now distribute the 5 using distributive property of multiplication over addition. Same thing with the negative 2 distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. The reason I'm speaking all these terminologies is so you get into that habit. And so we have 5x plus 5 plus 3x equals negative 2x plus 2. Now it's just like all the other problems we've done. And so we end up with x equals negative 3 tenths. Please go ahead and check the solutions to make sure it really works. If it did not work, you would call that solution extraneous. Look at this problem, how many concepts are involved. Making common denominators, factoring. So many terminologies and concepts were built into this problem. So it may look overwhelming to some of you, but don't let that throw you off. Just remember, in each moment, if you become conscious, not distracted, and focus on one thing at a time, you will not have any problems.